What's going on guys, John Elder here from Kodabee.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the canvas with Kenter and Python. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the canvas. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, we've been working in Kinter for quite a while now, and we haven't looked at the Canvas widget. And the Canvas widget is a lot of fun, lets you do all kinds of graphical things, draw, um, sort of make games you can do all just all sorts of things it's basically a graphical tool for kinter so here you can see i've got a canvas set up i've got i've drawn some shapes on it just some random shapes just to kind of show you what's possible in this video we're just going to do the very basic introductory things to understand what the canvas is and and a few of the basic things it can do like draw basic things. And in future videos, we're going to get into this in more depth because there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do with this thing. So let's go ahead and close this out. Now I've got sublime text open. We're using the Git bash terminal. As always, I got my starter code here with uh, just the basic stuff we always have and our main loop. So the canvas widget is obviously a widget like all the other widgets we've worked with so far. And we pretty much know how to create one of those. So I'm going to just come here and I'm going to call this uh, my canvas. And it's a canvas widget. And we want to put this in root and we want to give this a width of something and a height of something. And then we can also add other properties. So for instance, I want the background color to be white, you can use your hex codes for that. Uh, or you could just use the word white like this. Now for width, I'm going to put 300 and for height, I'm going to put 200, you could all use numbers like we're doing here, or you could create variables, you know, you can come up here and define a canvas with and then use that variable here instead of the actual numbers, but I'm just going to use the numbers for now. So like all widgets, we need to my canvas dot pack this onto the screen. And we give this a pad y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So go ahead and save this I saved it as canvas dot pi head over to our terminal here. And let's run Python canvas dot pi. And when we do we see we've got this square box that's white, and it doesn't really do anything right now because we haven't told it to do anything. But there's our canvas, right? And obviously, you can make this any size you want. There are other properties you can give it besides the background color, you can give it foreground color and all kinds of things. And we'll talk about some of those going into the future. But for now, this will work just as a basic setup. So now to do things with a canvas, there's lots of things you can do. But the most very basic thing is to draw shapes. And there are several functions that you can use to draw shapes. There is a create line function, there's a create rectangle function, there's a create oval function, and a couple other ones we'll look at. But those are the three I want to look at in this video. So to create a line, we just use the create line function. And that's we just call my canvas dot, and then we just go create underscore line, and that's a function, right? So inside of here, there's all kinds of properties we need to do. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to comment this out. And then I'm going to create another comment and say, uh, create straight, or just create line. So inside of here, there are basically five or six, mostly five properties we want to give this. And they are x1, y1, x2, y2, and then anything else you want. So for us, we would say fill equals, and then give it a color, right? So if you want to fill it with a color, or you want to make it a color, you could use that. If you don't care about the color, you could leave that off. So what are these x1, y1, x2, and y2? Well, this is sort of the most important thing you need to wrap your brain around. And this is the coordinate system for the canvas. And these are x, y coordinates. And if you're not familiar with sort of grids and uh, graphs, let me pull up a, an image I've got here. Think of your canvas as this graph, right? This is the x axis. This is the y axis, right? So and then there's numbers from lower to greater. So 100, 200, 300, 100, 200. You'll remember, our canvas is width of 300 height of 200. So for this image, we've got 300 for the width and 200 going up for the height. So those x1, x2 coordinates, these are the starting positions and the ending positions usually. And we'll talk more about that going forward. But think about this, 
x1, y1. So let's just create one here. Let's go 0, 100, 300, 100. And let's give this a fill of, let's say red, make it a red line. So what are we, what are we looking at here? So this is x1 and y1. So x1 is 0, y1 is 100. So let's look at this. x is 0. So it's right here on the 0 because this is 100, 200, 300. Starting point is obviously 0. And y was, what was that, 100? So that's right here. So the starting point is going to be right here, right on the y-axis. So that's our first dot, right? Now, if we look at this here, the next part is x2 and y2. So we have 300 by 100. So you see the y is staying the same, but now we're changing the three, we're changing the x-axis to 300. So let's look at this, 300 and 100. So x, we start at zero, go over to 300, and then up to 100. So our line will be straight across right here. And our whole thing is only 200, so this is really kind of like the halfway mark, right? So if we save this and run it, we see we have a red line going straight across. Okay, so that's cool. So now let's create an X, you know, across. So what we do here is we just create another one of these. These stack on top of each other, and we'll see how that can change going forward. But here for our second line, we do the same thing. My canvas, create line. We don't have to change anything here. Now we just need to change the coordinates. So let's go here, 150 by zero, by 150 by 200. So let's look at these. 150 and zero for X1 and Y1. That would be over to 150 and up zero. So just right here, right? The next one is 150 and 200. So over 150, up 200. So again, we go over 150, up 200, and then it'll get a straight line going from here to there, right? Which will then intersect. So if we save this and run it, boom, we have an X, we have a nice two lines, little crossing. And that's cool. So really the hardest thing of all of this is to kind of wrap your brain around the coordinate system. If you don't have any sort of statistical background, this can be a little tricky. So I just suggest making a little chart like this on a piece of paper, drawing it out, putting your numbers on it, and then just drawing it in there. So, so if you have a pen, you could just go, okay, you know, 150 by 200, there's our mark. And then, you know, then by, nah, and then we could just connect them. And that's roughly what our thing is gonna look like, right? So, okay, that's creating a line, pretty simple. We can also create a rectangle. So let's go my underscore canvas dot create underscore rectangle. And here we're gonna go 50, 150, 250, and 50. And let's give this a fill equals pink. Now, this coordinate system is a little bit different. So let me copy this whole thing and paste it in here. And let's give this a comment of rectangle. Now here, again, this is still x1, y1, x2, y2, let's give a space here, but these two things and these two things mean different things now. The x1 and y1, let's go x1, y1, that is top left. And then let me just copy this. x2 and y2 are bottom right. So top left, bottom right. So looking at our picture, that's going to be top left right here, and then bottom right, right here. So you give it these two coordinates, and then Kinter itself will just, you know, sort of connect the dots like so, right? But you have to give them these two coordinates, right? So, okay, let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got, for our top right, these two, we've got 50 and 150. So let's look at this. So let's go over 50, up 150. So that's going to be right here. And then over 250, up 50. So over 250, up 50 right here. 
So here and here. So our rectangle should go something like this. So let's save this and run it and see. And boom, we've got our nice rectangle, right? So notice the rectangle is on top and the lines below the rectangle don't show up. That's wholly because of how we put this line in our, uh, in our thing here. We could copy all of this and put it first. And if we put it first, it becomes the base thing, basically, the, the lowest bottom thing. And then everything below it here gets layered on top of it. So if we were to save this and come back here and run it, now our rectangle is below and the lines are on top. So that's kind of cool. Finally, let's take a look at creating a, an oval. And an oval is basically an ellipse, right? So let's go create ellipse or well, it's called an oval in, in this, so we'll, we'll call it an oval. And same deal, we just go my underscore canvas dot create underscore oval. And let's go 50, 150, 250, and then 50, and let's give this a fill color of cyan. I don't know why, I just like that color. <laughs> and so look at this, 50, 150, 250, 50. If we look at our rectangle, 50, 150, 250, 50, these are the same thing. Because when you create an oval, you're doing basically the same sort of thing as you are with a rectangle. In fact, I can just copy these here, and instead of calling rectangle, we could just call this oval. But we're not really putting top left, bottom right, we are, but basically we're, we're creating a rectangle and then the oval is fitting itself inside of that rectangle, right? So if we save this and run it, boom, we see the, rec the oval is inside of this rectangle. So the coordinate system is basically the same. And the same thing here, we could come up here and grab all of this and put it, for instance, underneath our rectangle, save this, come back, run it, and now the oval is underneath the lines because it's the next thing in the list. So that's the canvas. You really just need to sort of be able to think in coordinate systems like this, X and Y. And once you can do that, like I said, grab a piece of paper, throw an X and a Y axis on there, give it some numbers. They don't have to be exact, right? I didn't exactly count out this 100, 200, 300. I just put it on there for a frame of reference so you sort of know so that you can uh, pick where your coordinate positions are. And uh, pretty easy. So just to recap, you create your canvas, you put it in root, give it a height and width, give it a background color if you want. Now, if you don't want to give this a background color, you can leave that off. If you do that, let's go ahead and run this again. And you can see now it's just whatever background your app is. Ours is gray. So, you know, it's just like that. However you want it for your program, obviously. I just put the white on there because it kind of makes sense just to be able to see the canvas explicitly while we're learning how to do it. Let me put this back. Uh, give it a pad, give it a pack to put it onto the screen. And then you just create a series of whatever you want, rectangles, ovals, lines. Uh, there's all kinds of different things we can do like that. You could do images in there. You could do polygons in there. You can do uh, windows in there, all kinds of different things. And we'll, like I said, we'll look at some of those going forward. In this video, I just want to show you the absolute basic stuff sort of explain a little bit the coordinate system and so you can start to wrap your brain around that because that's really the hardest part of all of this. Once you can start thinking in X and Y coordinates, this is a piece of cake, right? And uh, that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So it pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.